Well, hello, everybody. Um, I was sent this last night in my Discord group chat. Of course, if you would like to be a part of this Discord group chat, you got to be a patron. And if you want to be a patron, just go check out DNA Reptile slash Patreon. That being said, Tasmania's Majin, Majin skate could become the first shark or ray to go extinct in modern times. And I didn't think about this because we hear about sharks and rays and how, especially sharks with like finning and everything, how their populations have drastically been reduced. And even with all of that being said, there are no sharks or rays that have been alive since we've been around to have to go extinct. So the same sharks and rays that are here now are the same ones that were here when the first people came around. And this one in particular, Tasmanian's Ma Majin skate, um, has been around since the time of the dinosaurs. At least they're, they say that because they're, they're you know, they're, there's fossil evidence of it. I understand they're cartilaginous fish, but there's ways that that kind of stuff, especially teeth, get preserved. Um, and teeth are always, you know, a very distinct, you know, they're very distinct even between species to species. So skates will have like flat, like stingrays as well. They'll have long, flat teeth um, that are used for like crunching up shellfish and stuff like that. Um, but these guys, let's see, the Tasmanian Majin skate has been around since the dinosaurs, but it could become the first ray or skate in the world to become extinct in modern times as a direct result of human activity. After a new study finds their population has plummeted in recent years. The Australian government must do everything in its power to avoid a global extinction event that scientists fear could occur within 10 years, possibly as soon as five. The Australian Marine Cons Conservation Society and Human Society International said uh, today after the report was released, urgent recovery measures for the Majin skate uh, must include restoring the health of Macquarie, Macquarie Harbor, um, development of captive breeding program and ongoing population monitoring of the skate's population. What, what surprised me is that th this hasn't been done already. I mean, I would think that it would be, if it's this close to possible extinction, that they'd already have programs like this. Or do, they, do, do we always wait until there's basically like 10 left? I don't know. Uh, the Majin skate, part of the cartilaginous group of fish that include sharks and rays. Um lives solely in part um, of Makir Harbor on the remote west coast of Tasmania in an area that's less than 100 square miles, making it one of the world's most geographically restricted sharks to race. Now that makes things really difficult. So it lives in a very small, remote location, and that's it. I mean, that's like those pup fish that live in like the pond or like the... the uh, what are they called? The springs in the desert in like Texas or Nevada or wherever they are. Like there's like a couple places where they live and that's it. It's it's very difficult to... I don't want to say... Justify is not the right word because if we can help any of these animals, we can. But if you really think about it, if an animal is that specialized and only lives in like that small of an area, if they go extinct and it has nothing to do with us... Is it really our problem? Like, is this something that would happen naturally? Because 99% of animals who have ever existed have gone extinct. And yet, you know, I don't know. It's If, if it has directly to do with us, obviously we need to do something about it. But if it's in such a small area, it's a little bit more understandable of why it's being wiped out. The water of... Mac Quarry Harbor is extremely poor, primarily because of depleted oxygen from intense salmon farming and altered river flows from the damming of rivers that feed the harbor. The skates and any eggs they lay are deprived of the oxygen they need to live. AMCS shark scientist Dr. Leonardo Guaida uh, said the Majin skate has been around since the T-Rex roamed the earth, but is now literally being choked to death in its home. That man has turned into a putrid bathtub. And the Australian government does not act now. It may disappear on our watch. I completely agree with that. I mean, if it is in such a small area, 
that's one thing. But the fact that the reason that it's dying out is because of the, the changes to the environment that we've created, 100%, that's something we need to fix. That's would be ridiculous if that animal died out because it was literally our fault. Okay, I can understand that. Tasmania is home to Australia's most infamous extinction, the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger. Does the state really want the ignom ignominy of hosting the world's first extinction of a shark or ray in modern times due to human activity? Majin skate population is plummeting. The University of Tasmania's Institute of Marine and Antarctic Studies reporting uh, report is alarming, finding that since 2014, the population has declined by 47%, with most of the decline occurring in two mass mortality events in 20 uh, oh two mass mortality events in 2019. So this is all happening like super super quick. Um. And it has to do with the salmon aquaculture. Okay, so yeah. That's not good. There's no resilience against killer mixing events and will likely increase with a warming climate. Of course, climate change has to be thrown in there. But, point being... Recommend... Wait, the reality of the risk we lose from important species... Of only exists in the harbor, so human activities related to the skate need to be managed, such as recreational fishing and those that have marine environments such as salmon aquaculture and river flow management for hydro production. So wait a second. So there's are people fishing for them? I don't think that's part of it. Why does recreational fishing have to be affected if you said that it was the salmon farming that was the problem and then using you know, changing river flowing for high hydro dams, you know, to get electricity. That's another thing, too. Whenever you talk about getting clean energy, whether it's a windmill or a hydro dam or whatever it is, it's always killing something else. Dams destroy the rivers they're on. Always do. Always a problem. They kill, you know, they stop the, the flow of, um, the, you know, the native species. And then, you know, the, the windmills will kill a bunch of birds. And, like, there's always something environmentally destructive. Um, solar heats up the area. You can't have any plants there. Like, they, it, would, it kills everything because it gets so hot in that area. It's And they got to clear out vast areas. Like, there's some solar um, farms not too far down the road from me. I'll try to record some when I uh, drive out there next time. But these vast solar farms literally take up hundreds of acres. And they're just like, it's nothing but solar. And it's it's hot. And the reflection is everywhere. And it's blinding. So, like, even this green stuff that's supposed to save the environment still ends up destroying it in many ways. Including wiping out species of animals. So, I mean... It's just, it's, again, it's weird to me that this hasn't happened yet. Like, there are no sharks or rays alive today that have been wiped out due to people. Or at least have even just gone extinct in general. I mean, at least as far as we know. But that's that's crazy that this is happening. And especially, it's the plum, they have plummeted over the past few years. It's really crazy to me when the species drops that dramatically. Because, like, even a few years ago... When I was born, like I was born in 95, and you turn around and like look at the species that were fine and then were wiped out, there are more than you realize that just like their numbers just drastically drop out of nowhere. Or the comebacks they can have. Like the comebacks we have here in Florida specifically. Um, alligators, panthers, and even manatees. Like they're like uh, Jewfish in the 90s. Pretty much all three of those species were just gone. There were like almost none left. And then since then, they've drastically come back. I think Goliath Grouper were like almost wiped out. Alligators were almost wiped out. There were almost no alligators left. They were almost extinct. And now there's 1.3 million in the state. Panthers are making their way back. Like there are success stories and this can happen. But you have to actually put that effort into making it happen. And especially if they've been wiped out as quickly as they have, something needs to be done about it. Um, I really hope that this doesn't actually end up happening, of course. But what do you think down below? Are there any species like this that you know about? Um, let me know in the comment section down below. Again, if you want to suggest stuff like this 
for me to go over like video wise um you can always comment or email uh, i'll leave my email in the description down below but also again i don't like to pedal it but i'm going to because you know i need i have i need i need to uh, like this is my living and i um Every little bit helps right now. I'm making a, a an okay living, but it's still, you know, just like everybody else. I'm working, I'm driving Uber, all that good stuff. You know, I'm doing what I need to do. But if you guys want to support this and you like my videos, it would be awesome. And also, uh, you get to be a part of the Discord. So, anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Stay locked.